Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So today in this video, I am doing my follow-up video for how my views on guns have changed since living in Germany. This video is going to be titled Things the United States Could Learn from Germany Regarding Guns. And so yeah, I'm not going to waste too much time with explaining the ins and outs and the intricate workings of this video. I'm trying my best to compact it to 15 to 17 minutes, you guys. So I'm most likely going to miss some things. If I do miss something very important for the purpose of this video, you are more than welcome to leave it down in the comment section. And so with all that being said, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. As an average person in the world, there are a lot of ways to protect yourself. Some people will argue that you need a weapon or don't need a weapon, but there is something that you can do as an average individual to give yourself a little security and protection while being on the internet. And that leads us into today's sponsor, which is CyberGhost, you guys. CyberGhost is a world leading virtual private network provider with over 38 million users from all over the world. I use CyberGhost to basically hide my IP address on the internet. And I use it to encrypt my connection when I'm using public Wi Fi networks because your girl will sit at Starbucks for hours on public Wi-Fi networks without a care in the world. When your online activity is fully encrypted, you are getting complete privacy. That means no one has access to what you are doing online. It is basically anonymous and not even cyber ghost has access because they don't keep logs of what you are doing. But aside from all of that technical information, you guys, cyber ghost unlocks geo restricted services, which is something that I'm very excited to talk about because for years, you guys, I have have not been able to access certain streaming services here in Germany, Hulu being one of them. And with CyberGhost, I have finally been able to access Hulu and watch some of my favorite shows that are not available in Germany. CyberGhost gives you unlimited access to 7,200 servers in 90 countries. So you have the Qual der Wahl. They also have apps for all operating systems and one subscription can protect up to seven devices at the same time. If anything that I have said has piqued your curiosity, I'd recommend checking out my link down in the description box because I have an 84% discount for you guys, which means you will get complete digital privacy for just one euro and 94 cents a month. You'll also get four extra months for free as part of my deal, you guys. And you have a 45 day money back guarantee, which means it's totally risk free and very easy to use and set up. It was probably one of the easiest things I've ever set up on my computer before you guys. And so yeah, we can get right into the rest of the video and thank you to CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video. The first point is going to be acquiring a weapon. In Germany, you have a Waffenschein and a Waffenbesitzkarte. These are two very different things, but it's very hard for me to explain them. I believe one is a license to carry, a gun and the other is the license or the um, permission to own a gun. And then you also have something in Germany called the Kleiner Waffenschein, which is basically for smaller, lower powered weapons. But in order to own a gun in Germany, there are some requirements that you have to meet. I'm going to split the screen up into the United States side and the German side. And you can see what is required in each country and then make a comparison also for yourself. In Germany, you have to be at least 18 years old. You have to have the necessary reliability and personal aptitude you have to demonstrate the necessary specialized knowledge, you have to demonstrate a need, and you have to have liability insurance for personal injury and property damage of at least 1 million euros. And all of the things that prevent you from owning a gun in Germany are things like being convicted of a crime in the last 10 years. There is reason to assume that the person will use the weapon recklessly. They were members of an organization that has been banned or deemed unconstitutional. They have in the last five years pursued or supported activities deemed a threat to Germany's foreign interests, they have been taken into preventative police custody more than once in the last five years. They are dependent on drugs, alcohol, or mentally ill. And also another little asterisk here is that if you are under 25 in Germany and you want to buy a gun, you have to be able to get a certificate of mental aptitude from a psychologist or a mental health 
officer or mental health specialist, I don't know exactly what the word is. You have to get um, basically certification that you are mentally stable. And so two things I think the United States could learn from Germany when it comes to acquiring a weapon is A, that applicants have to pass an examination, and they also have to show that they have knowledge of how to handle a gun and gun safety. I feel like this would be a win-win situation in the United States. You would have a lot more people, um, how do you say, able to use a gun. So if we do have mass shootings, if you want to say the good guys with a gun, all that good stuff, then you would actually have people that know how to properly handle weapons. There are so many people in the United States that own guns that barely know how to use them, which is scary because we have millions of guns, millions of people out in the United States with guns that do not know how to properly handle them. I think it's crazy that we require people to show vast knowledge of how to operate a vehicle, which it another story for another time because we don't do the best in that in the United States as well. But the bare minimum is that you have to prove that you are able to operate a vehicle. But we don't prove that people have to have extensive knowledge to have a weapon that is literally only there to cause injury and kill. And I personally think this is just an easy way to earn money as well in the United States. We're all for pushing for capitalism. So I'm like, why wouldn't you want someone to pay a couple hundred bucks to take a course. And then from that course, you get tax money and then the business is doing okay. It creates jobs. I'm just like, there's not really anything too bad about that. I also think something easy to implement is a mental health check. I mean, when you look at the nitty gritty of it, it's really not that easy because our healthcare system isn't the best in the United States. But I just feel like mental health is something that is always played down in the United States, but yet we always say, look at the mental health crisis that's causing all of these shootings, yet we do nothing to make sure that mentally ill people are being screened and prevented from getting weapons. They have to be proactively, or how do you say, in the past, they've already had to be caught being mentally unstable. But there are people that are able to hide that they are going through an internal crisis, and you wouldn't know, and if they go buy a gun and commit a horrible crime, there's nothing that you could do about about it. We do not take mental health that serious in the United States. There needs to be more emphasis on it. And I actually agree with the people that say we have a mental health issue in the United States. We 1000% do, but we're not doing enough to prevent the mental health crises, crises from boiling over. We wait until it gets to the point of no return, then actually trying to turn the temperature down and like get people to simmer down. It's like pushed, the flames are stoked, they're fanned, and then everything boils over and we're like, how could this happen? We need to do something about mental health, but we never do. And so I do think that mental health examinations should be required. They should be something that everyone needs to do. And if you're a person that says that you don't want a mental health check, um, I'm looking at you side eye because usually mentally stable people would be perfectly fine with having themselves be checked to make sure that they're mentally stable. Just letting you know. The next chunk of this video is going to be equality. Now, you're probably wondering what this has to do with guns in the United States and Germany, but something that is better in Germany than the United States, it's not even up for debate, you guys, is the gender equality between, you know, like male versus female. And I started reading about domestic violence, domestic partner abuse, intimate partner violence, I don't know what you guys wanna call it. I started reading about this because this is also one of the reasons you can't get a gun in the United States. And it was so shocking to me to find on the internet in the United States lawyers that were so proud to fight the good fight because if you have a domestic violence charge, it might not even be a charge, it might have be like the Verdacht, I don't know what the Verdacht is of English, you won't be able to buy a gun. And when you're looking at the numbers of people that die from domestic violence murders, women are five times more likely to die when a gun is involved or a gun is in the household than when not. No, 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 no pictures. No. 
<laughs> and this all ties into my equality point. And this is something that I think Germany does a lot better than the United States. In the United States, we have a very skewed image of equality or just like gender roles in general. I've talked about the damsel in distress trope in the United States that is always so prevalent that the woman is inherently seen as a weaker counterpart of a man. We have the societal idea that the man is supposed to take care of the woman, that the man is supposed to do everything for the woman and basically pays for everything and has ownership of a woman. We are arguing currently about women's rights in the United States if we have the ability to choose for ourselves, who gets to choose for us, la di da. Women are not seen as equal to men in the United States. If domestic violence charges can just go away with a very good lawyer and enough money in the United States, then you're not really getting rid of the issue. The next point you guys is going to be desensitization. I can, ooh, ooh, there's a lot of S's and Z's and T's in that word that are making it hard for me to say. What I have observed when a nation becomes desensitized is that it becomes very vulgar, it becomes very traumatized, it becomes very angry, and it becomes very divided. We are constantly exposed to violence in the United States. This is something that I realized recently. I've known this for a while, but it really like hit me like a ton of bricks this time around when they released the Uvalde video of the cops doing nothing at the school. Now for a lot of Americans, you might say that video isn't that bad. But since I've lived in Germany, that video, I have not watched it because it's violent. It's sad. It's triggering. And then to air this on national news for everyone to watch and consume this violent stuff that's happening is not normal. It's not okay. And when you are constantly exposed to this type of stuff, you start normalizing it. You start becoming more vulgar. You start becoming more mean. You have less empathy. You have less sympathy. And a lot of people think to themselves, well, why can't I be vulgar? Why can't I be mean? Why can't I normalize violence? I am an American. That's my right. That's my freedom. And it's like, how have we become so skewed or why are our views becoming so skewed that we want to have the freedom and the right to consume nasty violent content, that we want to be nasty and mean to one another? Why is it or how is it that we've come to this point? And it's because we're traumatized. A lot of Americans won't admit this, won't uh, can't admit this and can't understand this. When I talked about coming to Germany and PTSD, a lot of people were in the comment section, Americans, telling me that I don't know what PTSD is, that that's not true. And it's like a lot of Americans really don't know how traumatized they really are from living in the United States, from living in a country where you constantly have to fight, where you constantly have to struggle, where you constantly have to look over your shoulder and make sure that nobody has like um, bad intentions or ill intentions out for you. It's really really traumatizing to live like that. And trauma without proper medical care or health care or access to health care will, you know, go back, circle back into my previous topic of mental health, mental sickness, mental disease. And then, you know, going into the next topic of health care and why this is necessary to decrease the amount of gun violence we have in the United States. If everyone wants to say that the reason there are so many guns and shootings and deaths and horrible acts in the United States is because of mental illness, mental sickness, mental disease, then we need to have mental health care available and accessible to everyone in the United States. And the only way you're gonna be able to do that is not privatizing the healthcare industry and making it a for-profit business. Of course, you need to have a little bit of profit. The German healthcare system makes a profit as well, or there are elements of the German healthcare system that are profitable, but the core of the system should be there to help people not to make money off of people and exploit them when it comes to being the most vulnerable that they are, which is when they are sick. If healthcare outlets for mentally unstable people are not accessible and affordable, how should we combat the mental illness problem in the United States? If we could just take a page out of Germany's book and allow people to have the base foundation of basic comprehensive health 
healthcare, we would probably see a dramatic decrease in how much gun violence is in the United States because people are living in a constant cycle of traumatization and not being able to have an outlet to get away from the trauma. You sprinkle in people being left unattended because they don't have proper health insurance, they don't have um, very good health insurance, or they can't afford certain procedures, then more mentally unstable citizens will be produced. It will start manifesting into something worse, into something harsher. And so we all know how I feel about healthcare, you guys. I really don't have to go too much into detail about this. But all of this to point out, if proactive measures are not being taken to fix the issues in the United United States, how does adding a gun to any of the issues that we have make it any better? It's proven or it's been shown time and time again that it does not work. But yeah, those are all the solutions and comparisons I have regarding this point, you guys. You can let me know if I missed something. I probably did. I'll probably make another video about this because even when I'm thinking about it right now, I know that I missed certain points. But I want to say thank you to CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video and making this video possible. Like I said, check it out, you guys. So you are able to protect all of your data when browsing the internet and and also have access to all of the blocked and restricted websites, all for one euro and 94 cents a month. I love y'all. Thank you for watching. See you on my next upload and bye.